We've all seen Manchester United panic in transfer windows. I mean, we're getting used to it now. 2021, 2020, 2019, we do it every year. But this year feels different. This year is on a different level altogether. Now, today is all about that protest against the Glazers at Old Trafford. I'll be there. You do whatever you can, online and offline. Today, we're playing Liverpool and it's the, not the most important thing today. It's about that fight against the Glazers. And I will encourage you to do whatever you can, online and offline, to support that. But at the same time as all of this is going on, it feels crazy what's happening with Manchester United in the transfer window. What I'm going to try and do in this video is summarise everything with, with Casemiro, with Anthony, with Gakpo, and the De Jong situation, which still isn't closed. It's a madness, and I'll try at my best to cover it in 10 minutes for you. So please drop a like on the video. And as I say, if you can be at Old Trafford, be at Old Trafford. Do whatever you can to support this man, to support the club, to support Eric Ten Hag. He's, he said this in an interview that went out on Sunday night. He said, I'm not here for myself. I'm here for the club and to restore the club. I knew before this is the challenge and I wanted this challenge. Do what you can to support Manchester United and to support Eric Ten Hag. And something he absolutely needs, and we know this full well, is new signings. And this summer has been... Uh, Months of negotiating and haggling over what seemingly small amounts. But then all of a sudden, Manchester United have gone into an absolute free-for-all at the end of this transfer window. Where's this money come from? Hmm, the money's always been there. It's almost like the Glazers are panicking. And they are. But let me please try and summarise this all for you, because I, 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 it's really hard to get my head around. So I imagine you're in the same boat. Now, Casemiro... He's expected to be unveiled at Old Trafford in a similar sort of fashion to how Raphael Varane was unveiled. Now, we all know full well, I mean, I do for sure, this is an incredible signing. It really is. I know it, on the surface you might look at this and go, and there are, there are fair concerns, I think, about Casemiro because of his age, um, which I don't particularly think is a massive concern, but that's, that's I'm just reiterating what fans are saying because of the wages, because of how late in the window we've done it. X, Y, Z. But ultimately, Casemiro, he was one of the best players in the Champions League final last year, the whole Champions League in a season that they won the double. And he is a number six. Now, it's a completely different profile of midfield. If you think of what we've done this summer, we've gone from Frankie de Jong to Adrian Rabio to Casemiro. It's kind of like none of that really makes sense. And none of what's really going on right now makes any sense for Manchester United. But the club is absolutely crapping themselves. And Casemiro, that deal's done. And that's going to be worth around that 70 million euros. But on top of that, there is so much going on. And it's not just all hot air. Because with Anthony, we are really in for Anthony. Fabrizio Romano here with the latest update this morning saying United are in contact with Anthony's agents today. Of course, it all relies on what Ajax want to do. And we're also in contact with Cody Gakpo's camp. Now... Originally, I thought Gakpo was an alternative to Anthony, but what we're hearing now from Holland is maybe it's both at the same time. I'll cover that in a little bit. But over the weekend, Manchester United put in a 80 million euro bid for Ajax. I believe that was on Friday. That got rejected by the club. But we're expected to go back in. And Anthony is doing everything he possibly can to force this transfer. Uh, he wasn't in the squad to face Sparta Rotterdam on Sunday. He didn't train with them. Instead, you saw videos of him and his agents sipping red wine. It was a bit, a little bit disrespectful, I'll be completely honest. But this is what Alfred Schroeder, the Ajax manager, said about Anthony and about his future at Ajax. He said, I want Anthony to stay at Ajax, and I believe he has to stay at Ajax. We already sold five or six starting players, and he would not be acceptable if we sold another one. I'm not the, I'm not the one deciding, but I do have an opinion. Following on top of that, he said, yes, my feeling is positive on Anthony staying. We are playing Champions League football. I don't think United are playing Champions League football. Throwing out shade there. I mean, he's not wrong. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Anthony will join Manchester United without Champions League football. Because we're Manchester United and because we've got Eric Ten Hag. There is still a pool there. And the matter, even if that pool's been weakened. And I spoke about this Anthony deal on Twitter over the weekend. And I've got into a bit of, no, I wouldn't say a debate, but I've got into a conversation. Because this is absolutely true. It is outrageous that we're going to pay 100 million for Anthony. He is not a 100 million euro signing. 
And earlier this summer, we were in for Darwin Nunes. Now, I think if if even if we had 100 million off on the table, that Nunes would have chosen Liverpool. And I don't think any United fans can really argue otherwise. But at that point, we weren't willing to take that risk on Anthony. And all of a sudden, we were willing to take that risk. And I said this, I said, look, I'm excited by the deal, by the Anthony deal. But it's the fact that it's this. I said, look, you can be excited about Anthony whilst at the same time be ultimately frustrated at how Manchester United are just not slick in the transfer market. We've been poor in that area for years and years and years. And Anthony, I am fully believe that if we went in early this summer, I suppose at the same time that we were going in for Martinez, we probably would have got Anthony for 80 million and it wouldn't really have been too much of a conversation. If we had paid 130 million for them, I think they would have sold both straight away. Maybe not straight away, but it would have been easier. We're overpaying because we're panicking. Yes, we are, but we're panicking. I'll tell you what, as I said, the Glazers at Manchester United's strategy this summer has been very tight, very, very tight. Um, up until we've just agreed that deal for Casemiro, I think our net spend was around about 50, 50 to 60 million pounds. And all of a sudden, we're going crazy. All of a sudden, we're panicking. It's because something's changed. It's either the Glazers have got a new way into some more investment that we don't quite know about yet, or they're just panicking because they know full well, and I said this, there's two ways forward for, for the Glazers here with Manchester United. It's either they've got to invest or, or they've got to sell because the legacy value of Manchester United as a brand has diminished so much. They've drained that dry. And what we're seeing now is a major bit of investment. Maybe it's... Uh, We'll, we'll get into it when the summer transfer window is closed, but the timing of it certainly coincides with what's going on with the protests. Now, I'm not saying the protests are to be on an end, but the energy against the Glazers and to get them out. And Jim Ratcliffe coming in, with more momentum than any than, than we've ever seen at any point, I think. But moving on from Anthony, is the, moving on from Casemiro, moving on from Anthony to Cody Gakpo, it's crazy. But it's Manchester United and our lack of strategy what we're seeing here. It's come from the Telegraph out in Holland saying Man United want to sign both Anthony and Cody Gakpo. It's not a choice between the two. Now, of course, with Cody Gakpo, you will know full well that he is involved in the Champions League playoffs against, against Rangers. I think it was two all in the first leg. Second leg is in two days' time. Rick Elfrink. You remember that I interviewed Rick. Uh, he writes for I'm, uh, was it Eindhoven, Dagblad? Uh, Eindhoven Daily Newspaper. Anyway. Consider the most reliable source on PSV. It's what he said about the Gakpo situation. He goes, without a bit from United, PSV will continue to assume that Gakpo is staying. But look, they know the price, 50 million. It could go fast after Wednesday. And I imagine it would go fast after Wednesday. I genuinely thought that we were looking at Cody Gakpo purely as an alternative to Anthony. And I did a video yesterday looking at how Manchester United could line up with Anthony or Gakpo. Maybe it's with both. I don't know. That's For me, that that's, feels and sounds a bit outrageous. But I can't rule anything out at the moment. I re You can't. Honestly, even if you are the biggest cynic in the world, and trust me, I'm a, we're all cynical as United fans now. We look at something and go, mm, I'm suspicious if that's correct or not. In the same way that I'm suspicious about this spending and the timing of it all and how all of a sudden, after months of just tight purse strings, that all of a sudden we've just found hundreds of millions down the back of the sofa. It doesn't sit right with me overall. But if we make the signings that we need, because we know this squad needs a cash injection. We know this club needs a cash injection in every single fibre. And a conversation I didn't think that we would be having anymore. I really, really didn't. The amount of times we've talked about Frankie de Jong. Ah, I mean, I'm sure there are loads of videos that people can pull up about Frankie de Jong that will make me look stupid. But uh, Manchester United have kind of been made to look a little bit stupid. Now, Simon Mullock uh, from the Miller, I tell you, from the Mirror, sorry. I tell you what, Simon Mullock this summer, he's he's certainly got some sources inside the club. Uh, probably at the start of the summer, you would have just completely dismissed anything he was saying, but he's been accurate quite a few times in recent weeks. So he, I just wanted to run through this article he did yesterday, saying United are looking to complete another three transfers, and Frankie De Jong, you can see, is the first name he mentions there. Frankie De Jong is also being mentioned out by the Telegraph and Marcel van der Kran saying that Manchester United will try again to sign Frankie de Jong. Now, I know you're exhausted and tired from this conversation, but because Jules Conde is not currently a registered Barcelona player, Barcelona still need to sell. 
Now, Frankie de Jong played yesterday, started yesterday, played 85 minutes, I believe, in their 4-1 win over Real Sociedad. A mixed bag. A very mixed bag from a player who has been absolutely on the fringes of that Barcelona team. And I don't need to explain that in any more detail. But Barcelona still need to raise money. Now, it's not just with Frankie de Jong that they could raise money. You see the names on this list. Samuel Antiti, Martin Braithwaite, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Memphis Depay, Serginio Dest. There's five names there that Barcelona could sell. And there's a sixth name. And we know that. And we've known that for a long, long time. But according to reports in Holland and in, in England... The Frankie de Jong situation is not dead. Now, you'll see for well that I've mentioned this name at the end of the video. For the life of me, I don't surely after all of this, are we going to get Frankie de Jong that late in the window? I don't personally think so. But I'm also... I mean, that's a pipe dream, right? Casemiro and de Jong. But what's going on? Honestly, what is going on? I don't know. Once this transfer window is over, we'll be able to look back and try and assess. But this summer has been... Well, it's been pure Manchester United. It's what I hoped had changed. Ultimately, what hasn't changed. And United are panicking at the end of this window. And we're panicking big. Casemiro, Anthony, Gakpo, De Jong. Where does it end? Where does it stop? Who, who's coming in? I've no idea what our squad's going to be like in nine days' time. I seriously don't, because I did not think that Casemiro would be part of it 72 hours ago. Lo and behold, here we are. But remember that about what the focus is today. It is these protests and this march against the Glazers before the Liverpool game. Do what you can online and offline. I've been doing what I could do for years and years and years. So you don't have to tell me about the importance of this march. Do what you can. I've covered everything here. I tried to anyway on Casemiro, on Anthony, on Gakpo, on De Jong. It's mad. As I said, I tried to go away for a few days and literally the world explodes with Manchester United. I'm going to the protests tonight. I'll be back with the live streams on Wednesday because I've got to travel back from Manchester on Tuesday. Take it easy, everybody. But Man United at the moment. Wow, 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 wow.